welcome friends in this video I am going to tell you uh, the process of how uh, DNA is made accessible to us uh, if you uh, are not familiar with the term chromatin remodeling and DNA uh, binding protein or uh, or DNA modification uh, which is called not DNA is histone modification so I, I uh, tell you to go back and see the videos about uh, about this chromatin remodeling and histone modifications before I look into this video because this video I'm not going to talk about uh, from from all those basic things I'm just going to talk about the way DNA is made accessible to us now here is the DNA which is really compact in nature this is from the 30 nanometer chromatin fiber of the DNA as we know it is made up with uh, this uh, this uh, nucleosome complex which is the histone octamer with the DNA sequences and also the histone 1 proteins which is helping them to make this model uh, wh whether they are solenoid or uh, zigzag model right so whatever uh, it is uh, these are the, this is the portion this red color region is the region of our interest we need to have access onto that region and to have the access onto this region what we need we need to remodel uh, the chromatin in such a way that th this region can be accessible by the proteins by different proteins uh, of our interest now it utilizes uh, the different techniques what I have covered before the three usual techniques one is the sliding uh, or slipping second one is the um, the transfer uh, of the DNA strand and third one is the f uh, the flipping so you can utilize any one of them or any two of this uh, these techniques to make this region uh, free to attach with the chromatin remodeling proteins okay so remodeling protein will come and bind with the region right after the accessibility it will change the accessibility of the region it will help uh, this chromatin to uh, to to be uh, this dna to unwrap a, a little bit from this uh, new this histone octamer structure and when it does so there's another type of protein which is called dna binding protein 2 uh, and and this protein will come and attach to this region it will help uh, uh, this protein region or the region of our interest to finally become accessible uh, to the protein what we need the protein of our interest which is called the histone acetyl transferase now this protein as we know as we've talked before uh, acetylate uh, the DNA regions acetylate uh, sorry it acetylates the nucleosome or N terminal chain as a result the DNA can be accessible the DNA uh, can be loosened out from that uh, fr from those histone octamer structure and it can be transcribed it can be replicated and all these things can happen so for that purpose there are protein 1 protein 2 which m finally remodel this this uh, DNA structure then uh, we have finally accessible uh, this histone acetyl transfer is finally accessible to the site it will attach to the portion it will acetylate uh, uh, the N terminal domain of histone octamer proteins uh, of HTH4 and H H2, H2B whatever type of uh, in terminal domain are there it can acetylate that those region and as a result of this acetylation uh, this DNA condensed structure is now getting separated so this 30 nanometer structure is getting separated into 10 nanometer chromatin fiber now this 10 nanometer chromatin fiber is pretty accessible by other enzymes uh, like polymerase like DNA polymers RNA polymers which can carry out the further downstream processing of like a replication of the uh, DNA or transcription of the DNA and making the mRNA from the transcription and the regulation of transcription uh, in all these cases so before going to this step before making this much more accessible we need the activity of other proteins like uh, DNA binding protein 2 and DNA binding protein 1 and before uh, uh, without the activity of this DNA binding proteins this histone acetyl transferase cannot establish its work in this particular place so this is not a single stage process this is a multiple step process which is tightly controlled why in the biology we are having the multiple step procedures keep this thing in your mind all the time if you're reading biology that uh, this uh, this multiple step procedures give us an enormous amount of control because if we having the multiple step we can control the transition stages we can control we can making checkpoints uh, we can make this checkpoints between those transition stages of those uh, of those different stages so you can control uh, those stages that's why uh, if there is a long way so don't uh, try to cover up the long way with one run so cover up in small runs that you can check every time the whether uh, you are whatever you are doing is perfect or not whatever your figure body is perfect or not this simply like that okay 
So again, in the previous times, what we have done, we, we are utilizing the chromatin remodeling proteins, which will come and uh, make this protein slightly accessible, break this region slightly accessible via the different mechanisms like sliding, in uh, uh, flipping, or uh, transfer. And right after that, only the protein histone acetyltransferase will come and access the region. And finally, it will acetylate the N-terminal region of the histone. It will modify the histone, and then then only other proteins like DNA polymers or RNA polymers can come, and all the other central dogma process can be carried out in the future purpose so first the, the chromatin remodeling second is the uh, is uh, the histone modification and the third one is the physiological processes so this is a sequential way of how you can access a particular dna in this example we have talked about the acetylation and this can this is true for methylation this is true also for the phosphorylation too so this is the example uh, and i hope it will help you thank you